Hello guys, welcome back to another episode in our 3D printing series. So, what we're looking at today is going to be a clevis hitch for either a Britons or a CQ tractor. Pretty much a, a universal sort of adapter. And straight away you can probably see that we've started with our connector that we built in the last episode. So this is the, the whole reason for making that connector. It's going to be used in pretty much everything that you want to use on the rear links of either a CQ or a Britain's tractor. So why do we need a clever hitch adapter like this? Well, if you look at your Britons or your CQ models, pretty much any model really, you'll see that the link arms or the lifting arms, they're a fixed sort of metal piece. They don't flex and move like a real uh, tractor's would. You would get some left to right movement out of a real tractor. but these uh, lifting arms on your model are fixed in position so that means when you hook up to a trailer with the standard hitch that's on any of these models it's fine if it's a static model that's not going to be moving because obviously you can set it at any angle but if you try to reverse with that sort of a trailer on uh, this sort of hitch you'll find that your drawbar starts to hit these fixed uh, lifting arms and what that means is you have a very limited uh, angle that you can uh, reverse your trailer at. So what we're doing with the clevis hitch is we're moving that uh, axis of, uh, of rotation away from the lifting arms. You're moving it back probably 10 millimeters. So that the only thing that you have any possibility of hitting when you're uh, reversing with your radio controlled vehicle is the tire. You, you're going to hit the tire with the trailer before you hit your vehicle or before you hit well before you hit anything else and that's not really an issue because at that point you're probably turning at an angle of about 90 degrees and realistically you're not going to be getting that much uh, maneuverability at that point. You, you probably at 60-70 degrees is what you really want whereas the standard lifting arms are probably restricting you to maybe maybe 30 or 40 degrees before you start hitting them. That's the kind of problems that we're trying to solve here with this uh, 3D print series and we're going to be taking uh, little problems like this uh, all along through the series and trying to come up with solutions that we can 3d print and test out so if you're interested in this kind of thing make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon as well so that you get notifications the idea for this clevis hitch isn't really something that's new to the channel I had done one with my uh, GEE Tech i3 printer a few years back, but you don't really get the same level of detail with the uh, FDM type uh, printer because uh, it, it's kind of built for bigger parts and this is a very small part. When you try to print something this small, the material tends to overheat and it loses its shape and it doesn't really, uh, as it's been as you're putting different layers on it doesn't really have time to cool and the result of that is well it's usually just a blob of plastic left on the print bed but to get around that you kind of have to uh, make things slightly larger than you'd like and remove some of the detail if you want it to, to even nearly work so that is what I had previously done I wasn't able to do the little uh, pieces that support the or to connect to the link arms on the sides of the of the hitch I just made basically a square with a couple of holes in the side that I could glue uh, a couple of little bits of copper in to, to connect with the link arms rather than actually trying to print the parts now 
if you've watched the channel for a long time, you'll see that they've the, those little parts work great for years. Um, they weren't pretty, but uh, they did the job, and that's why this uh, part that we're designing at the minute is pretty much taking those dimensions and just adding a little extra level of detail to try and make it a little bit, uh, well, a little bit better design. If you're new to the videos, you might not know that we have a website that sort of accompanies the videos. It's rctractorguy.com and if you go over there, you'll be able to see uh, more details on each of the builds. So each, each of these 3D prints should have its own page with uh, its own information on uh, just various aspects of the design. So if you're looking for any more information, head on over there. The software package that I'm using here is Autodesk Fusion 360 and it is basically a professional uh, CAD package but it's free for hobbyists so it's kind of ideal for our applications. You have all the features that you would expect from a professional software except for the engineer and change control sort of functions but you don't need that to pay for modeling. You know. You're only going to have one part. It's, you know, it's not a complex assembly. You, you don't have a production line that uh, needs to be directed to the most recent drawings or anything like that. So it's pretty ideal for us as hobbyists. And as well as that, it has functions kind of geared towards 3D printing. So when you're in the tools menu of this package, there is a function to export. Uh, I usually have it set to export to a uh, Repetia host which uh, controls the GEE Tech printer. But uh, if you just untick the checkbox to link it to a, a particular uh, software for a 3D printer, it'll allow you just to output the STL file and that's what you want for the Anycubic Photon. You just want the STL file so you can bring that into, I think it's called chai 2 box is the, is the slicer software, or the cam software. So uh, Autodesk is kind of geared towards uh, that from a hobbyist perspective and it has all the functions. You even have uh, the ability to do sheet metal design if you wanted. So let's say you were trying to uh, make a sheet metal chassis or something like that for to modify one of your models. Well you could mock up where the bends have to be on a model here in, in your CAD package and then when you come to actually make your, your sheet metal part you wouldn't really be guessing then where the parts are you'll have already seen where all the bends are and you can do a flat pattern of the part if you wanted to so there's a lot of capabilities there if you needed them What about the pin for this uh, clevis hitch? Well, you could 3D print a pin for it if you wanted. Um, I don't think you'd have any problems doing it with the, uh, the resin type printer. Although, I'm not sure how strong it would be because it's going to be quite a small pin. But what I've always used with the previous versions of this has just been a, an M3 bolt. Uh, you get them in various lengths, whatever length you need and you're not going to break it, you're going to break the clevis hitch long before you break the, the pin or your, your little bolt so you know I don't see why or I don't see any reason not to use it you get a nice one with an allen key head and it kind of looks like a proper pin uh, you know a nice black uh, allen key headed M3 bolt Well, we're getting to the end of the design here. I hope a few of you at least are following along and uh, 
kind of learning how to do it yourselves in, in Fusion 360. As part of the series I'll go off and print uh, these various little bits and pieces and uh, in another video we'll come back and we'll look at how the prints turned out and we might take a look at uh, how to set up a Chai 2 box so that you get the, well, what I think is our good results I guess. Cause, uh, I'm no expert on any of this, I'm just kind of learning as I'm going here. But hopefully what uh, what I see during my prints will help some of you guys when you're trying to do your own prints. Well we're pretty much at the end of the design here. So if you liked the video make sure and hit the thumbs up button. Uh, all that sort of stuff uh, helps to get the videos out there. And if you have any comments and suggestions let me know below the video there. Or you can head on over to the forum or the Facebook page. And if you have any of your own designs, you know, share them on the Facebook page or that, and uh, you know, let other people see what you're doing, and maybe it'll inspire someone else to come up with a, a design for something that we can uh, use with our RC tractors. That's pretty much all for me. I hope you enjoyed the videos and thanks very much for watching.